Hello and welcome to another edition of Wi-Fi Soft training videos. In this video, we are going to see how we can configure the various hotspot services inside uh, Unibox. So uh, just to refresh your memory, uh, Unibox also functions as a hotspot controller as well as a hotspot management system. Uh, so it uh, one of the main functions that it provides is to provide you a complete end-to-end -end solution for managing your Wi-Fi hotspots. So let's look into how to configure a new controller as well as a hotspot service inside Unibox. So log into Unibox and navigate to authentication and controller section. In this section, uh, you'll be able to define or uh, view what all controllers have been configured for your hotspot. So a controller is essentially a hotspot service that runs inside Unibox. So by default, when uh, you will always get one controller service enabled, which you can go and customize further. But a administrator can add any number of uh, controllers inside inside the inside the Unibox. Now each of this controller can be associated with one of the uh, either a real uh, WAN circuit or a virtual uh, virtual LAN. So in, uh, if your Unibox supports, let's say, six Ethernet ports, so each Ethernet port can be associated with a um, with a controller. Obviously, you'll require a WAN link. So you are maybe out of uh, six uh, Ethernet ports, you can use five Ethernet ports for configuring your hotspot. Uh, generally speaking, uh, you uh, people run one or two hot, uh, hotspot services depending upon the kind of application they want to use. So uh, to add a new hotspot controller, you have to click on the plus sign and a pop-up will appear. Here you have to give the name of your hotspot service. So we will call it gets hotspot for example. And then you have to select one of the LAN profiles uh, for running this uh, controller. The LAN profile is associated with one of the LAN ports. So you have already created one of the LAN ports here. here it needs to be alphanumeric, so I'll add a dash sign here. And then you have an option to select um, the authentication mode. By default, the local authentication mode is set up. Local authentication mode means um, uh, the controller will use the local radius server or local AAA server for validating and authorizing the users. In case of remote uh, authentication mode, you can configure your own radius servers uh, that you get from your radius provider. So uh, remote authentication mode is generally used if you want to use Unibox as a pure hotspot gateway and not use any of the built-in authentication mechanisms or authentication services uh, that Unibox provides. So let's first look at the local authentication mode. In case of local authentication mode, the radius server will run within Unibox itself. So in case of local authentication, you next you have to configure the interim interval. The interim interval basically is the time period between which the hotspot service will send a packet to the radius server uh, for each user that is online. This packet will contain information like amount of data consumed, the time, the time the user is online and other miscellaneous information that is associated with the user session. Next you have to enter the realm. The realm is basically a suffix uh, like wifi soft.com that you need to configure uh, for for this particular hotspot the realm is usually appended to the username of the user uh, to uniquely identify a particular user within a particular hotspot next uh, you have to configure the whether you want to enable auto login on this hotspot Auto login is basically uh, uh, allowing the user to get online automatically after the, after the user's MAC address is registered with the system. The way auto login works is that 
when the user logs in for the first time uh, the, the Unibox will capture the user's MAC address and will associate that particular MAC address with the user's uh, user's identity which is the username in the system the next time when the user comes back with the same device the mac address of that particular device automatically is identified by unibox and the user is uh, sent online without having to go through the captive portal this significantly makes uh, the hotspot more usable because the user doesn't have to keep on logging over and over again uh, at the hotspot so we'll go ahead and enable the auto login feature and lastly you have to whether this particular controller is enabled or not similarly you can also configure a remote authentication mode in case of remote authentication mode you have to specify the ip address of your controller uh, sorry of your radius server so now you can have the radius server within your uh, within your network or you can also have it somewhere on the internet uh, for example i'll give out an ip address of your primary radius server and you can also configure a secondary radius server just in case your primary radius server goes down then you have to configure the radius secret uh, the radius secret is generally the password between uh, the unibox controller and your external radius server this password is used for encrypting any sensitive data that has been exchanged between Unibox and your radius server. So enter a strong password for your controller and then you have to define a NAS identifier. A NAS identifier usually is a, an identifier that you create uh, to uniquely identify your NAS device. So for example, I can create a identifier with a particular ID I can give this will be the NAS identifier and uh, after this you have to define the authentication ports and the accounting port the authentication port is the port on which the radius server will listen for authentication request and the accounting port is the port on which it will listen for the accounting packets lastly you can define the interim interval the realm and the auto login parameter auto login uh, uh, feature before you save this controller once the controller is saved an entry is made for that controller with in the controller section now once the controllers are configured uh, you can go ahead and configure the captive portal for this controller so every controller can have its own captive portal within unibox so essentially you can have multiple hotspots running inside Unibox, each hotspot with its own unique captive portal or the login page. And the login page will have multiple authentication methods available for you. So on one captive portal you can uh, have a simple username password. On another captive portal you can have a social media or a voucher based login. So um, this enables you to create multiple hotspots on multiple uh, LAN uh, networks within your, uh, within your bigger network. So let's take an example of a hotel for example. Uh, uh, hotel. The hotel may have um, guests uh, staying in its rooms, it may have a conference center, it may have a restaurant. So technically you can create three separate uh, hotspots one for the guest one for the conference uh, users and third for the restaurant users so in this way uh, in inside unibox you can run multiple hotspot services and thus enjoy uh, the centralized management of your complete wireless infrastructure with this uh, uh, we conclude the controller and the hotspot section of, of uh, unibox administration you can learn about how to create captive portals in our captive portal training video. Thank you so much for watching.